Hello and welcome back to another episode of Breaking Bad Influence. We're gearing up for Christmas, everyone. Even though it's already past Christmas by the time this is released, whatever. With wires and knobs. Cameras. Hello, if you're still having trouble with your Christmas list later on, Bad Influence will be presenting the first guide to 12 Days of Christmas, including these amazing laser guns. Oh no. 20% of this episode is going to be them singing a technology-themed 12 Days of Christmas, isn't it? Shall we just finish this episode now? I can already tell it's going to be a waste of time. Andy takes part in an experiment to find out what he might have looked like as a Viking warrior. Oh, it just gets worse. It just gets worse. At least we've got a review of Need for Speed on the 3DO. Oh, and... And stay tuned for the first ever Donkey Kong Country Cheat, courtesy of Namrood. Yes, they've got so little to discuss in this episode that they're actually advertising an upcoming cheat now. This is the end of days. It's a packed show today and there's more. The term super console is a relatively new one. It also doesn't exist, Violet. You can't make up your own technology, then start pretending like everyone is using it. Stop coining phrases that no one has ever used. First of all, it's never been officially available in this country, so you have to get it as an expensive grey import. And secondly, new games cost as much as £200 each. £200? That's a ridiculous price to pay for such an old game. Oh wait, never mind. Like the old machine, it lets you play arcade games in your home, including this one, The King of the Fighters 94. It's a massive game, more than five times bigger than Super Street Fighter 2. The fighters have more moves than a mongoose in a shopping bag. <laughs> Butlers, what am I? Doctor Who? That's right, <laughs> a snow nam, get it? No. Oh, well, while we're waiting, here's a great cheat for the brand new Donkey Kong Country on the SNES. During the... Cranky winding his gramophone sequence at the start. Spell out Diddy. That's down, Y, down, down, Y. Like so. And the cheat will give you special access to a very special room where Kong can play any of the animal bonus games as many times as he likes. Just watch this. <laughs> oh, look at that, Rhino. Go! Was that it? Was that the big advertised cheat? I played through Donkey Kong Country again recently, and I can tell you from now, those bonus levels get dished out about every 12 seconds, and they take about a minute to play through each time. I actively started to avoid the damn things because I was so bored of them. So thanks, Nam. Thanks, Bad Influence. Thanks for nothing. Next up, it's Need for Speed on the 3DO. I've not played it, and at this point, I don't care what the scores are anymore. Make your guesses. It's more of a car driving sim than an arcade action game. This yellow car's my opponent and I'm just overtaking him now. You can pick your opponent's car as well as your own so you can make things easier or harder for yourself. Well, this is the most 90s menu screen I've ever seen. The best thing about this game are the spectacular crashes which you can watch over and over again. It's not really destructive, is it? It's about as exciting as throwing a brick at a brick wall. This is the worst part of the game. As in Road Rash, the speed cops are everywhere and you have to be pretty nippy to avoid getting a ticket. Surely you'd be driving fast anyway if the police are trying to hunt you down for speeding. Did you... did you press the brake? Were you confused? This is a stunning looking game that would certainly benefit from some extra tracks and a two-player option. I'm looking forward to the sequel. This game is fantastic. I can't wait for another better game to come out. This must be the best looking console game in the world. And the scores for the need for speed the girls went into overdrive and gave it five, but the boys stayed in fourth gear. Four and five. I don't have any feelings anymore. I'm not sure if I'm happy or annoyed. Everybody's seen pictures and films of Vikings marauding. Everyone? I'm not sure if that's factually accurate. But how do we know what they actually looked like? Well, nobody does, definitely. Be OK, cool. Question answered. End of segment. It's a puzzle that the York Archaeological Trust have been trying to solve since they set up this place, the Jorvik Viking Centre, ten years ago. Ugh, I'm already bored. Bring back Zed. All is forgiven, Zed. These models of Scandinavian pirates are an artist's impression of how they might have looked based on wood carvings, sketches scratched on slate and other bits and pieces that have been dug up over the years. But like all sketches, they weren't perfect. So what did Vikings really look like? And why should we care? They're dead. Give them some peace. The scientists in York are now using a new technique to try and put flesh on the bone and rebuild a real Viking's face. Yet when I tried to do that with the bones of a dead cat I found down by the riverbank, my wife called me a psychopath. Once again, it's one rule for historians and another rule for the rest of us. Now we can tell from the skull and its skeleton the age, sex, 
height and build of the person that they need to find. In this case, it's a male between 25 and 30, slim build and about my height. Are you looking for me? Someone, I'm looking for someone. Where can you be? I do fashion photography. I'm looking for a trendy girl with a simple smile. Male between 25 and 30, slim build and about my height. Um, I like to uh, do a lot of sailing. I like to outdoor activities. I like climbing. I like travel. Are you looking for me? Although the laser is very low powered, I've been warned not to look directly at the beam. I bet he did anyway. He's an absolute maverick. As the data from both the skull and my face, the equivalent points on the two different faces have to be lined up. So on the left, the face of Andy Crane, on the right, the skull of the unknown Viking. Time for the techies. Once we've got into the computer, I've got to match up your face with the skull yeah. using these 38 points, 10 down the centre and 14 either side. Imagine being a Viking back in the Viking times, dying in battle, and then years later your corpse ends up on children's TV with Andy Crane's face poorly stretched over it. This isn't Valhalla. This isn't Valhalla at all. Lynn uses the photographs and the skull to sculpt a face which will hopefully look like a Viking who lived in York over a thousand years ago. Kill me. So until scientists come up with a time machine, technology like this is the only way that you and I in the 20th century can journey back and join Vikings like this guy in the 10th. Andy, stop chatting up dead people. Thousand year old Andy. Can you tell the difference? Well, yeah, the one on the right is better looking. I think is that enough? Give me some more. News and previews time. Ristar, or Ristar, or Ristar, or whatever the hell you want to call it, is coming out. Little Big Adventure is coming out soon, a game that makes the task of just turning around an ordeal. And Shadow Fighter on the Amiga is coming. Shadow Fighter. It's one of the few beat em ups to be developed specifically for computer formats as opposed to consoles. Once you've defeated all challenges, you get to compete against the mighty Shadow Fighter. There's a training level where you get to bash up a puppet opponent. Out next week on Amiga with CD32 versions early next year. I bet it's shit. Furtless, uh, uh, this snow is very cold, uh, which brings me to my next snowy tip. Balls! <laughs> okay, that's the first time Nam has actually made me genuinely laugh. With only a few shopping days left to go to Christmas, you're probably worrying about what to buy your favourite furtler. Well, fret no more as we present you with the Furtler's Guide to the 12 Days of Christmas. Oh, God, here we go. I knew it. I bloody knew it. Take it away, Andy. <coughs> <coughs> On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a cartridge in a TV. This is, in fact, a SNES and TV combined in one handy little case. Sadly, only available in Japan. No. No, 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 no. I hate this. This is going to take forever. This is one of the newest computer controllers. It lets you command your computer simply by pointing at it. And this is one of the oldest. Believe it or not, it came out five years ago for the NES. And a cartridge in a TV. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three fresh games. Our votes for the freshest games of 1994 go to... It's not even Christmas. Two data gloves. And a cartridge in a TV. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me four calling birds. Right, the four days in, and they're already stretching the limit to this. No, I'm, I'm stopping it here. Fast forward, this is absolute bobbins. I've had enough. Christmas has been cancelled. Here's a section where Andy gives us a lowdown on some new mice that are available for all your home computing needs. Lots of mice available on the market this Christmas, including designer mice. A leopard skin, or teak, whichever takes your fancy. A Hot Wheels mouse, if you like cars, with a pointer to match. This home mouse, which lets you design your own pointers, like these dancing girls. Or this aeroplane. There's an infrared cordless mouse. There's even a mouse that looks like a mouse. That's only six. No, but you haven't met my friend. Meet Minnie. Oh. Oh, take track, take track. Oh, no, no, it's still the bloody song. Oh, I hate this. I hate everything about this. Bad influence is literally the worst. I can't even put the boot in anymore. All you lot want me to do is sit here and take the piss out of the show. And I can't even do that because they've decided to sing a bloody Christmas song for three hours. I mean, just look at these comments. OMG, Chris made a cameo. Chin chin. That was comedy gold from someone called Matthias Bayus. This is some of your best work, man. Incredible from someone called Maz Gaming. 
Just watch Series 1, Episode 1 of Breaking Bad Influence, and it's ticklishly funny. Five out of five for sarcasm and succinctness. Star Eyes, Crying Face, from someone called Violet Berlin. Can you do one where you do an interesting commentary instead of crap put-downs? This is just gay. This is just gay. Can you do one where you do an interesting commentary instead of crap put-downs? This is just gay. Where you do an interesting commentary instead of crack put downs. This is just gay. Crack put downs. This is just gay. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and children of all ages. Welcome to another episode of Loving Bad Influence. I'm here with my good friend and potential life partner, Stuart. How are you doing, Stuart? I'm absolutely fantastic, Dave. Thanks so much for asking. No, Stuart, thank you. Today we're going to be looking at Series 1, Episode 1 of Bad Influence, and I'm going to be providing some lovely facts for you all. You'll be able to see moving screenshots. Now... This is funny, isn't it, Stuart? <laughs> it is, yes. Because Andy here says moving screenshots, which, as we all know, that's just video, isn't it, Stuart? <laughs> it is, yes. But we have to really put into context the time of the show and when it was released, because back then, screenshots were quite new, weren't they, Stuart? Yes. So Andy was a little bit confused there, but it's fine. He's a lovely man. Did you know he's now a radio DJ, Stuart? I did, yes. Oh, such a lovely man. And here's Violet Berlin. Did you know that Violet Berlin was the first woman on television to hold a Mega Drive controller, Stuart? I didn't know that. Yes, she was. And that's why, when they developed Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles, the designers decided to put a little Violet Berlin in there to commemorate her being the first lady of computer games. Isn't that good, Stuart? It is, yes. Now this fella here, Stuart... Yes. He's called Nam Rude, and backwards that spells doorman, which, back in the early 90s, literally translated to provider of cheats. It's not a phrase we use often these days, because the internet has changed the way we talk, but isn't it fascinating to see such old words still in circulation at that time, Stuart? Yes. Okay, now we've got our first review. This one is Joe and Mac caveman ninja for the super nintendo e system and now the e stood for entertainment i'm not sure if you knew that stuart no because nintendo wanted to distance themselves from the nintendo console system that they'd released a couple of weeks before this so they didn't want to call this one a console isn't that fascinating stuart yes now did you know stuart no i didn't that back in the dinosaur times they didn't actually have any ninjas at all oh wow really i actually didn't know that so when they call this Ninjas game... were actually only invented after the cavemen had been wiped out by asteroids, meaning this game is what we often like to call science fantasy. Now, Stuart, you've been working on a lovely song for us, haven't you? I can't wait to hear it, Stuart. Let's get straight into it. Joe and Mac and the Data Blast Rock Fire SVR in the BBC Micro Lawnmower man and bat or toad the super scope And a ghost girl And a snake peek a sonic too The magazine didn't last very long And every episode had a cheap for Zool Turbo Touch 360 and Smash TV On the Game Gear Ten seconds of Streets of Rage 2 Lovely Andy Peters Boy of Burley and has blonde hair And I'm Ruby the she said, but well, however you pronounce it, I love boy looks bad influence. Bad influence is great. Lovely Andy Peters, boy at Burley, now spawn hair. And I'm Ruby, the knees are washed. She said, but well, however you pronounce it, I love boy looks bad influence. Yes, I do. Now 
Anyway, back to it. On the night. Oh, for fuck's sake. They're still singing this bloody song. Right, skip to the review. Sensible Soccer it is. Five out of five. Sensible Soccer is the king of the computer football games. And it just got better. Oh, wait, he's giving the game away. This is a sequel, isn't it? So that's points knocked off already. This game has got much more depth than the original. I'm sorry, but the words sensible soccer and much more depth don't really fit, do they? They, they, they just don't fit together. This game will keep you occupied for the 12 days of Christmas, and probably 12 months after that. I can't bother with all the managerial stuff, but I love playing the games. Passing's really easy once you get the hang of it. I hate the managerial stuff. I only like passing. That's where the heart of football lies. Sorry, soccer. No, sorry, football. This gives me eye strain. Oh, shut up, so high. I'll go and get stuck on Lion King again. Sensible World of Soccer scores fours from the boys and the girls. Well, there we have it. All of my surprises have not been surprises once more. NBA Jam on the Game Boys next. Who cares? They come into America. I was pretty skeptical about the idea of a basketball game on a Game Boy, but this proved me wrong. It's fast, fun, and surprisingly detailed. I wonder why they'd scraped up an American person to do some reviews, and now I realise she's mostly been commenting on American-centric sports games. They've literally shipped some lass in from the States so she can say whether or not she likes basketball games on the Game Boy. I really miss all the brilliant sound effects of the 16-bit version. It's a pity that there's no two-player link-up option. Yeah, it's a real shame that you can't share the ice strain with your mates. I can't see how the Game Boy can possibly do better than this. Tell me you're reading from a script without telling me you're reading from a script. Forget everything you've ever thought about handheld sports sims. I don't think I knew anything about handheld sports sims to forget. Are people experts in this kind of thing? It's a funky four from the boys and the girls. Same score as Sensible Soccer. Now, let me put this to you. How many of you out there have fond memories of Sensible Soccer, and how many of you have fond memories of NBA Jam on the Game Boy? Just a show of hands will do. You don't have to shout it out loud, because regardless, I can't see or hear you, but I already know what the answer is. Burr, 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 burr. Huh. Hmm, not as funny as when he said balls. Balls! <laughs> Last week's competition prize was a Mega Drive 32X and Star Wars, which everyone thought was shite. This week, it's a PC with click and play. No hype for the PC this time, though, which is weird, as they never shut up about it last time. Next week, we'll be having a Christmas special in which we'll be looking at all the hardware for next year, including the PlayStation, the Saturn and the Ultra 64. Next week is the Christmas special, apparently, even though every episode for the past three episodes feels like it's been a Christmas special. And then it's credits time. So, in summary, then... Filling the show with segments about cavemen is upsetting and absolutely should not ever happen. NBA Jam on the Game Boy is a beloved classic that everyone remembers and adores. And if you're going to make a comment about crap put-downs, try not to use the term gay in a derogatory fashion. It makes you look like a stupid twat. And your ideas are shit. And you've got a smelly, smelly bumhole. See you next time for the final episode of this series of Breaking Bad Influence.